Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to green and clean beauty. And I am back today with a review for the My Shell Sun Shield Liquid. It's an SPF 50, I have it in color nude. I'm gonna tell you all about it. So without further ado, let's get right into the review. Here we go. Heads up, if you're going from toxic to non-toxic and have no clue where to start, Check out my free green beauty guide back on the website. It's the one pager I wish I had when I first started out. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another one. All right, so quick rundown on what's going on with this product. The Michelle Sun Shield Liquid Tint is SPF of 50, UVA, UVB protection. It is $24, has a matte finish. It is 100% mineral sunscreen. Oil-free, recommended for all skin types, and free of gluten, parabens, petroleum, phthalates, sulfates, yada, yada, yada. So great price point here, really liked that. Got this as a part of a gift set from the Pharmaca Ambassador Box, which I am no longer probably subscribe to because they had some things to say about it to the brand, but whatever. Anyway, I digress. So let's dive into the scorecard question for this guy. How do the ingredients look? No longer assigning a number score to ingredients. Instead, I'm giving you key information that you can review because this toxic or harmful to one person might be okay for another person. There is no universal number and it's misleading. That is the conclusion I've come to. So how do the ingredients look here? Very strong. I go ingredient by ingredient. I reference EWG and a couple of other different sites that I really like. And the only ingredient that's standing out a little bit, which there is some debate about, is zinc oxide. I have a link to a really interesting article about zinc oxide versus titanium dioxide, which actually kind of opened my eyes to titanium dioxide in powder form. Didn't really know all those things. Now I know. That is something that people kind of have a back and forth debate on, as opposed to just having a physical sunscreen versus using a 100% mineral sunscreen. There is cocoa glucoside in here, which is derived from coconut oil. So if you have coconut oil allergies or issues, I just wanted you guys to know that. The rest of the ingredients, however, looked fantastic in my opinion. In terms of coverage, the next question is, does skin look like skin? How was the coverage? I gave it a five out of five on the scorecard here. It is a sheer lightweight tint, like it says. It's great at what it does. It glides over the skin, very light coverage. And as a result, my skin looked exactly like skin. No problems there, very natural, very happy. The next question, I don't know what that is. Does it last? So, yeah, I do think it lasted really well. It's very sheer, light coverage, stays on. To get the sun protection, it says to reapply every two hours. Pretty simple answer, gave it a five out of five there, and that's pretty much it. Is this an irritating product? Did it irritate my skin? Does it have ingredients in there that could potentially irritate sensitive skin types? In my opinion, no. You can check out the scorecard. There might be something on there that I haven't called out, and it's an ingredient that drives your skin crazy, so make sure you check that out. But no, I feel like this was very easy to use, no reactions with Whatsoever. It just kind of did its thing and I didn't have to worry about it. So it got a five out of five on the scorecard. Does it play well with other products? Yes, because I think it's so thin and easy to put on. It played very, very well. I have heard before that it is kind of drying for some people, so they have to get it on really fast to get it absorbed and into all the right spots. Would recommend if you have drier skin, you might want to use a moisturizer. I know that people are concerned about having SPF on above a moisturizer. There's conflicting information out there. I have not had a problem with that. I put on a serum beforehand and I've put this on afterwards, been out in the sun and have been fine still. You check that out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I don't want to get anybody sunburned. And if you really are on the fence, definitely ask the brand to give you their opinion. I have asked other brands. You all have commented on here and they've both said different things. Like all these different brands are like, no, it's fine to put it on over. No, you really need to put it on first to get the most benefits. You know, I don't know. Just do what you got to do. If you have an issue there, you have drier skin and you're okay with putting a moisturizer on first, then by all means, go for it. It got a five out of five on the Style Shaker scorecard for that one. Let's talk about shade range, cause there is none. <laughs> really, there's very limited shade range here. There's two colors and one just transparent color. It is limited to say the least. I obviously have a lighter skin tone as you can see by this video. I don't know how it would work on darker skin types. So if you've used this and you have feedback there, please be sure to leave it below. This is like a forum, so it's really helpful. But overall, it's a pretty limited shade range still. There is a translucent version of this. I feel like applies universally to skin types. So I feel like that kind of covers the rest of it. I'm a little torn here. Didn't really know where to go. So I went middle of the road. I gave it a three out of five on the Style Shaker scorecard. And for the final question, is this a consciously created product? It's a little shaky ball in there, by the way. 
it's nice it shakes it up really well oh, did i mention that it reduces photo aging that's another product benefit that it speaks to here anyway is it consciously created i've asked the brand to give me all the information i know that this is recyclable this does not feel plastic um i don't know what percentage recyclable all this is so i have a question out to the brand on that hopefully i hear back soon and we'll update you here instagram and then also on the post just so you have it for reference that portion of this i'm not sure it's sustainability tbd we'll get back to you i asked these questions in advance for these reviews but some people just takes forever to get back to me so goes life is vegan and it is cruelty free so it's checking those boxes which is fantastic i don't know however if there are nanoparticles in here i did ask that i will get back to you on the nanoparticles because there's a whole other Thing about nanoparticles. I'm not going to dive into it right now. Overall, for sustainable and consciously created products, I'm giving it a three out of five. It is still a TVD, so more to come. The final score here this product received a 26 out of 30. I personally love this product. I use it all the time. I think it's a great product to have on hand for summer. It comes in different SPF options. The price point, pretty fantastic. I really also like this matte finish because oftentimes with SPFs, they can get a little greasy, they can get a little runny. If you're looking for something that is the opposite of that, this would be the way to go. Would I recommend it to a friend? Yes, absolutely. I would recommend it to a friend unless they're freaked out by zinc oxide, which some people might be, I don't know. Crazier things have happened. That is my review. For today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and found it helpful. I will see you all right back here real soon with another product review. Until then, bye.